In this video, we're going to look at the nature of light. So light, light can be two different forms that we think of. It can either be a wave or it can be a particle. In this uh, lecture, we're going to learn about how light behaves like a wave. And so light is made out of perpendicular oscillating waves. So what does that mean actually? So let me pull up the picture here. So light, when it travels, has two different waves. Oscillating just means repeating, and perpendicular is two waves at 90 degree angles. So these two waves um, interact with different particles. So you have the electric field wave, which interacts with charged particles, and the magnetic field wave, which interact with magnetic particles. Now light is incredibly fast, way faster than sound, um, and it has a constant speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second or 670 miles per hour, or it would take you 0 0.03 seconds to get from San Antonio to Tokyo. So light is incredibly fast. So before we go further, let's just um, look at what makes a wave a wave. And there's some things we have to know about. First, waves have amplitude. That is the distance from the node to crest, or basically just how big your wave is. And really, the brighter a light, the bigger the amplitude it is. Waves also have wavelength, that is the distance between peaks or crests or hills, whatever you want to think of. Wavelength is simply the distance from peak to peak. Frequency is just the number of, time, number of waves that pass at a given point of time. So if this wave was moving, and if I just started measuring for here and said go, I would count the number of waves that travel over a set number of time. And for that, our units are hertz, or cycles per second, or second inverse, a really weird unit. And really, all of these things are, are um, together, are all, all, all together. For example, um, the larger the amplitude, the more force it has, while the higher the frequency, the more force it has. So these things all affect each other. And if we look at the relationship between wavelength and frequency, we see they are inversely proportional. So let's think about this. If I have my cursor here, and I'm measuring how many waves pass with that cursor, well, if we had a shorter wavelength, more waves would pass. If we had a larger wavelength, less waves will pass. So we say that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional and they're all related through this equation where this V, this V is frequency equals C, speed of light, divided by lambda, which is wavelength. So we can use this equation to measure either wavelength or frequency. So for example, let's say I have a red laser pointer has a wavelength of 642.8 nanometers. Remember, nanometers is 10 to the minus 9 meters. If I know what the speed of light is, you could calculate the frequency for me. So try and do that. I don't have the answer for you here as it's a simple cal calculation, but just be sure you know how to use this equation. Oh, I do have it here. I'm, I'm a liar. So here's our uh, frequency equals speed of light divided by wavelength and we solve for frequency 4.66 times 10 to the 14th inverse seconds. Alright, now when we think of light, we naturally think of visible light and that's just the wavelengths of light that humans can see um, and, then the, and we call all the colors a spectrum. So white light is just a mixture of all the colors and we can split the colors out. Um, we see this when we see a rainbow uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet. The way I learned to remember that is Roy G. Biv. You might hear of other ways to remember the colors, but those are the colors of light that we can see. And if you just look at the colors here, red has lower frequency, blue has higher frequency. So this color scheme tells you the frequency, red, low, indigo, violet, high. And when an object absorbs light and reflects others, it appears colored. For example, red shirts, they absorb 
all light except red. That red light is hits the shirt, bounces off the shirt, and so to our, to our eyes, that color looks red. So that's how all colored objects work. It's just that frequency of light bouncing off and hitting our eyes. Now, all visible light, that's just a very small fraction of the wavelengths of light we have in the universe. All wavelengths of light are called the electromagnetic spectrum. And a lot of these um, types of light should be familiar to you. You might not have thought of them as light, but they are light. So we have radio waves, microwaves, infrared light, visible light, super tiny, ultraviolet light, x-ray, gamma ray. And this scale is the amount of energy. So gamma rays, x-rays for you are really bad for you. Ultraviolet light is what gives you sunburn. Then you go to infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. Those, those go through our body no problem because they're so low energy. Now since light interacts like waves, they can add together, and that's what happens when you mix two waves that are in phase, they will add together and get bigger. That's called constructive interference. Why, if you have two waves out of phase, for example, out of phase, I mean, we have a crest here and a dip here, they're out of sync, they'll destroy each other. And that is called destructive interference. That is actually how noise canceling headphones work. They send out a a wave that that is out of phase with the sound coming into your ear, and they all cancel out, and you don't hear anything. Now waves also diffract. So here I'm showing a wave that hits a wall with a small opening in the wall. And what will happen is that the wave will diffract out. And we know this from when we hear echoes with sound, because sound's also a wave. While particles do not bend, they go right through the wall. Okay, so here's a question for you about waves, electromagnetic radiation more specifically. So I have four different types of radi radiation for you. I want you to one, List them from increasing frequency, so high frequency at the top, low frequency at the bottom. And I also want you to list them from decreasing energy. So high energy at the top, low energy at the bottom. Pause the video and see if you can do that. All right, let's take a look. So your highest energy, on the, or sorry, your, your highest frequency, I'm gonna start with that, is your ultraviolet, then your infrared, your microwaves, and your radio waves. And if you go by energy, your highest energy is also ultraviolet, infrared, microwave, radio, ra radio waves. So this shows you that things with high energy have very high frequencies. Um, that's the relationship between the two. All right, that's our look into how light behaves like waves. Um, in the future videos, we're going to see how it behaves like particles. So see you then.